Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, it looks like a lot of people said, Ooh, it's chilly out. I'll watch online today. It's wonderful to have you all here with us um, this morning on this, this bright and crisp Florida winter day. You know, the great thing about winter in Florida is that it doesn't last very long. So it's wonderful to have you here with us this morning in worship. A few announcements that I would like to lift up to you is, first of all, I want to just share that there are prayer cards in your pews. And if you have a prayer concern, um, please go ahead and fill out one of those prayer cards and the ushers will collect those um, during the first hymn. If you're watching us online and you have a prayer concern, then by all means, uh, please uh, call the office or send an email. You can send me an email at pastor at tequestaprez.org and I will add that to our prayer list. Or if you have a prayer concern that you would like to speak to me about, by all means, please reach out to me. We are here for you. Uh, this afternoon, we have a women's prayer group. It's, it's just starting. It's being led by Jocelyn O'Neill, one of our church elders, and it is at 4 o'clock today. So if this is something that you are interested in, by all means, please come this afternoon at 4 o'clock um, for this women's prayer group. Uh, just as a note, uh, there's, there's no children's programming today aside from the children's sermon because I know that Sydney and Ryder and Layla are going to help me with that today. Um, but it's Stay With Your Family Sunday. So we're all looking forward to that. Now, Wednesday, Wednesday, who's coming to family game night? Well, I'm going to tell you, I've been getting emails and it says... Well, am I too old to come to family game night? And you know what the answer is? No. Family game night is meant for everyone. And there's all sorts of different things. And we have food coming in from Chili's. So it's 6 o'clock Wednesday evening. There will be activities out here in the courtyard and also in the fellowship hall. And we are having food coming in from Chili's. The cost is $10 for an adult and $5 for a child. That just covers our costs for the food. But we hope that you will come and join us. It's not too late to register. All you have to do is look at the email that comes out um, later today or the one that came out on Thursday, or just drop an email to myself or Crystal, and we will add you to the list. Next Sunday, there's a couple of important things. First of all, uh, it is your time to bring back your green bags that are going to be stuffed full and overflowing. Right, Fred? Right. Stuffed and overflowing to help um, the Palm Beach County Food Bank. And so we will need all of your green bags to come back. The following Saturday, we will be taking those green bags over and helping to sort them. So if you are interested in helping out in that particular mission activity, I would encourage you to reach out to Fred after worship today because he needs to know how many people want to help. Stand up, then we know who you are. Anybody who doesn't know who Fred is, there he goes. That's Fred. All right. All right, Fred. And uh, finally, the other news for next Sunday is that we do have a congregational meeting, and it's very brief. It's just to go over um, a review of our 2021, talk about our transition team that's forming, and some other activities. I know a lot of folks are curious about our roof, and we are very pleased that the funds have come together to raise the roof. So, beloved, let us join our hearts and minds together. Let us worship God.
Good morning. My name is Sarah Greer, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. I serve on the session. I am chair of our preschool committee, and I work with the finance committee as well. Please stand if you are able, and let's call our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the holy temple. Give praise in the firmament of heaven. Praise God, who is mighty indeed. Give praise for God's excellent greatness. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please remain standing for our first hymn, which is in your bulletin, Come Live in the Light. You may be seated. Our call to confession this morning. If we say we have no sin, we decided ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be. 
so that we may delight in your will, walk and holy in your name. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full of acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Can I ask, is this, a, oh, there we go. Hey, can I ask the, the young, younger folks to come on up here? You're going to help me today. Come on. Come on, Layla. Come on, Ryder. Come on, Sydney. All right. Okay. Sydney, I want you to grab that tray right there, okay? And Ryder, do you want to get that balloon right there? And we're going to go and we're stand, going to stand right here, okay? All right. Well, you know what's coming up in a couple weeks, right? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. And what do we do on Valentine's Day? Bring people chocolate. Bring people chocolate? Yes. Chocolate and hearts. What else do we do? Uh, share love. Share love. Yeah. We help people. You help people? All right. Come on over here, Ryder. I don't bite much. Okay, what does this balloon say up here? I love you. I love you. And is that something we should only say on Valentine's Day? No. No, when should we say it? All the time. All the time? And who should we say it to? Um, mommy, Daddy, uh, Grandma, Grandpa, Other Grandma. Uh, God? God, yeah. What about you, Leo? Um, you cousins. Cousins? Jesus. Should we should we say I love you to people who aren't very nice? No. no. <laughs> Let's rethink that answer. Yes. <laughs> should we be nice to people who aren't nice to us? Yes. Why should why should we be nice to people who aren't nice to us? We can regain their friendship. Well, hopefully we can redeem their friendship, but what else? So we can, like, even though they're rude to us, we can still be kind to them so they can be kind to us back. And maybe then they'll learn that they can be nice too, huh? Maybe no one's ever been nice to them, right? What are you going to say? What? 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 <laughs> I love doing this. So who loves us more than anybody else in the world? God and Jesus. God and Jesus. Holy Christ. And the Holy Spirit. That is right. So when we see this balloon that says, I love you, who are we? Who is saying that? Would that be God, God. God and Jesus? Okay. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And the whole three in one. Here, Layla, mm -hmm. do you like hearts? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you, you positive that you like these? Okay. Okay. So what do some of these hearts say on them? Um, XOXOXO. I love you and other kind messages. I love you and maybe hugs and yeah. things like that. Star, okay. Kiss me. Probably, the kiss me's are probably for your, your, your grandma and grandpa. They love smushy kisses, don't they? Or your boyfriend or girlfriend. 
You're too young for a boyfriend or girlfriend. We're not going down that road, okay? That is one journey we're not taking this morning. But, but, you're, you're every, but we love one another. And who loves us? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So would you like to take some of these little hearts? Sure. Let me hold it this time so that you can do it, okay? Okay. You want to take you want to take one to somebody you love? Sure. Do you want to take one to someone you don't like? <laughs> and just remember, go ahead, Ryder. He goes, I'm going to just take a little one for that. All right. And remember above all else that God loves you. Okay? Thank you for helping me. You can go back to your moms and dads. And for all of our adults, we're going to put the balloon right here. Right here. Because it is the Lord who loves us. Let us all pray together, all right? Gracious and loving God, we just give you thanks uh, for the many ways in which you demonstrate and show your love for us. May we share that love, not just with those we like, but with those who are challenging to us. And Lord, may th our, through our love, the love that you have given us through Jesus Christ, may others come to know your love too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I anointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, truly I do not know to speak, how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I anointed you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do we have our prayer cards? <coughs> prayer cards? That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Prayers for the people. Right? Yes. Okay. Sometimes I need a road map to get from one spot to the next. We know it's a cold morning. And this morning I want to as we quiet our hearts in prayers, think about those up north who have had these strong storms that we, maybe you've seen on the news that went through Massachusetts and Cape Cod with hurricane force winds. And we all know what those are like. But imagine hurricane force winds when they're cold. And imagine um, getting over two feet of snow and not having any power or heat. 
Imagine that you're homeless and you don't have a roof over your head or no food to give to your family. And then think about us down here in Florida where it is cold. There's no doubt that this is, this is Florida cold. But think of our farmers who spent most of yesterday covering their crops to protect them from the hard frost. Or the farm workers who go out day after day to harvest the food in which we enjoy. And as we quiet our hearts and minds, think of those we may never know and give our thanks for all the ways in which God has covered and blessed us. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Lord, we give you thanks that we are your people, that you have placed your love in our hearts, and that we have been called to pray and care for one another. Open our eyes and expand our hearts that we may see beyond just the walls of this congregation to the great big world, your creation, that you have offered in your love. We pray, Lord, during this time of transition that you guide us through the presence of your Holy Spirit to grow in word and deed that your words are our words. Your heart is our heart. Your love is our love. In the name of Jesus Christ. We don't know what we would do without you, especially in times when so many around us are feeling unwell because of the coronavirus or suffering from age or anxiety or the devastating effects of cancer. Lord, we continue to pray for, for Mason Middlebrook as uh, he continues his battle. And we ask for prayers for Herb Stotes as he has been diagnosed with colon cancer. And for Lynn, who is his caretaker and wife. Lord, help us at all times to give everything to you, for you have given everything to us. We pray for Wes John as he is recovering from surgery at home. And we pray, Lord, for Crystal as she too is recovering from illness. Lord, we pray for Crystal and Clive's friends, Sandy Stramando and her family, as they have made the difficult decision to remove her husband from life support. And Lord, we pray and continue to pray for Cindy Ryan as she grieves the loss of her child. Lord, we pray for Judy and Muff, for Vivian and all those, Lynn, who have recently lost a loved one in our community. Lord, surround us and comfort us as a warm, fuzzy blanket keeps us warm on a cold winter's day. May your Holy Spirit surround and envelop us in your love and your grace and your comfort. It is in these prayers that we lift up, knowing that you are the great I am, that you have called us and you will never leave us and that you seek our welfare and not harm. We ask these prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This week, our Minute for Mission 
is about the per capita. You might have received a letter this week or will be receiving one from your stewardship committee. The letter is requesting your participation in the per capita. This is an annual contribution that we give to the uh, General Assembly uh, every year. And we appreciate so much you making those contributions. Uh, it makes us feel a whole part of the Presbyterian family. So our video will tell you a little bit about that. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Whenever and wherever we gather as God's faithful people, we are giving thanks and praise for both God's infinite grace through Jesus Christ and the joy of Christian friendship and fellowship. For Christians, our thanksgiving is not a private affair between an individual and God, but a means of building up our neighbor. Our neighbor may be a chance visitor or a stranger who sees and experiences the joy of the gathered believers. Our per capita offering is the tie that binds. It is the very Presbyterian way we ensure our denomination, the Ecclesia, the body of Christ, the corporate body of believers, gathers together in times of joy and sadness, in times of discernment and witness, to be in ministry together. Our per capita offering joins us as a united body of believers. It is our participation in the life of the church universal, committed to work and live in fellowship with all persons in every nation. Our per capita offering is an individual affirmation that we believe and belong to this body of Christians called Presbyterian. The New Testament affirms that the Spirit acts within believers as individuals, but also for the sake of the believing community, the Church. Our individual offering joins others in the joyful participation with the Spirit's collective work of strengthening and expanding the Church. As Presbyterians, we may not always agree, but we do welcome all voices to both the decision-making table and the Lord's table, where together we discern how we will be God's people and join God's mission in the world. Our distinctive form of decision-making honors discernment by individual members who have made promises both to God and to God's people that together we will serve with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. As Paul writes, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. When you contribute to per capita, you are saying thank you for the gift of the church, the body of Christ, that we may continue seeking together the mind of Christ, working for justice and mercy in the world, and participating in God's continual reformation of the church as we move from strength to strength, being the church together. Ashes may come forward. This morning, our opening hymn was, Come Live in the Light. We truly have the light of God with us. Our church has gone through so many journeys, uphill, downhill, but the light shines. And with your generous contributions and generosity, that light continues to burn and our church continues to live. Thank you.
We thank you, dear Lord, for your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we pay, pray for our congregation today. And Lord, may we all give with gladness and sincerity. Bless these tithes and offerings. Amen. Our voices together and sing our hymn number 339. 335? That one too? I think it's 339. Be thou my vision. You would have been singing the wrong one, Ken. Let's join our voices for hymn number 339. Be thou my vision. Please be seated. Before I read um, our second passage, I just want to share a couple of things. Yesterday we had an officer's retreat with the deacons and the elders, and I think it was a pretty good um, response. It was a very heartfelt, spirit-felt uh, morning. And one of the things that I invited the elders to do and the deacons was to think about where we are seeing God, where are we seeing Christ, not just, you know, in the abstract, but where we are seeing Christ and where we are seeing God in the people that we meet, in the events that are happening in our day-to-day -day lives. And so one of the things we did is uh, we wrote um, how we would describe God. Not perhaps in the buzzwords of what we learn here in church, but in the everyday vernacular of where we are seeing. So you will notice when you go out through the narthex that there is a great big poster. And it says, God is dot, dot, dot. And we've started filling that in. And there's markers there for you to continue to tell, let us know how you're seeing God and how you would describe God. So think about that. God is dot, dot, dot. And one other thing that we came up and discussed was our desire to really make and grow a stronger connection between our preschool and our family ministries. And so we're really excited that this Wednesday evening during our game night that we know of at least three families from the preschool who will be coming 
And this, they are not members of our church. They haven't come to worship. But this is our invitation to get to meet someone. So please introduce yourself to someone you may not know. Introduce yourself to someone who might be sitting in front of you or behind you in the pew that maybe the face isn't all that familiar. Let us worship together as the body of Christ, not just in this space, but throughout our lives. So this morning's New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. And just as a reminder, this is a church that Paul had organized or birthed, what we might call today a church plant or a new church development. So Paul was heavily vested in the welfare of this congregation. And when news reached him about the troubles and conflicts that they were having, he took pen to hand and wrote some of the most beautiful words ever recorded in human history. Words that we frequently hear as a couple exchange their wedding vows, but as true with home and church, once the bells ring and the couple exit the church, the loving and challenging work of living together begins. So let us listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 11. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love Abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, as your word has been read and now proclaimed, quiet our hearts and minds to new understanding and how we can be your people this day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> well, when I turned 40, I decided that I wanted to learn how to play the piano. Now, I'd always wanted to play the piano, but there was never enough time or really strong inclination or the funds available or the right instructor as a child to pursue that wish. Yet that desire to learn never went away. And so at the age of 40, when some might call my midlife crisis, I determined to learn to play. So I went out and bought a beautiful grand piano. It looked fabulous in my living room. It was great. 
And just hedging my bets, I made sure that this beautiful grand piano could play even if I couldn't. All I had to do was put in a little disc and voila, my grand piano would play. It became a player piano. However, <clears throat> I soon discovered that learning the piano at middle age is not as easy as one might think. First of all, the lessons are written for children, and I'm sorry, but you can only do Twinkle Twinkle and the Mexican Hat Dance so many times before you want to move on to more sophisticated tunes. Sophisticated tunes that require using both hands, your left hand and your right hand playing different notes simultaneously, which I soon discovered at my age was pretty difficult to retrain this hand not to follow this hand. You see, if I speak in tongues, but I have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, or as Eugene Peterson translated, I'm nothing more than a creaking, rusty gate. No matter how hard I tried, my left hand would always follow the melody of the right. And so my music never had the fullness of which it was intended. It's Sunday again. And here we are, back within the sanctuary of our hearts, back to the word, back to Christ and the promise and hope that new life in Jesus Christ affords. But it has been a noisy clangy, cymbal-crashing, gong-smashing week. And maybe you're hearing these words from Paul and thinking to yourself, well, that's all fine and good, Kathy, but my boss expects five completed proposals on his desk first thing tomorrow. I need to tell the board of directors we need to increase our expenditures 30% to cover the rising costs of good brought about by the pandemic and the pandemic. Is this thing ever going to be over? Crash, clang, bang, boom, breathe. Focus. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. I'm bankrupt without love. Love never dies. Don't be afraid, says the Lord to Jeremiah. For I am with you to deliver you. Ready or not, we are called to face the world in love. We are currently studying baptism in our multi-generational Bible study entitled Follow Me. And as we remember our baptism, I am reminded that it is always God who acts first. God initiates it's up to us on how we respond. In Hebrew, the unpronounceable name of God that we translate Yahweh, in which Martin Luther translated Jehovah, the name of God, the great I am, is also a verb, to be. Paul's letter to his beloved church in Corinth expresses how we are to love one another, agape, as a reflection of how God has already loved us through Jesus Christ. Paul uses agape to love as a verb. And the world still clashes and clangs and roars and new headlines fill our ears with a cacophony of distractions. We read of the survivors of the Holocaust who gathered last week to remember the liberation from Auschwitz-Birkenau to a world that they fear has forgotten the atrocities. We see our own government continuing to struggle to find common ground, choosing party politics over welfare of the nation. In the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson stands Stout, refusing to step aside, even though there's strong evidence that he broke the strong restrictions in the first wave of the coronavirus, the same restrictions that he asked everyone else to follow. 
and young athletes from around the world who have trained the majority of their lives for this moment in time are traveling to the epicenter where two years ago, life as we knew it changed dramatically with the discovery of this new and deadly virus. There are natural disasters, tsunamis and nor'easters, violent attacks and shootings, almost commonplace, a malaise of intolerance, cling, clang, crash, bang, boom, the cacophony of distractions pulling us away from the melody of God's enduring love. Scholars call Jeremiah the reluctant prophet. Look at the words that Sarah read and paraphrase. Look, Lord, I'm just a kid. This is too much for me to proclaim. I'll never have a friend with this kind of message. It's just too hard. Yes, says the Lord, but I'll still be with you every step of the way. How can you learn what you are capable of if you don't try? How can you grow if you don't learn from your mistakes? I am, says the Lord. I am with you to deliver you. Follow me. The pastor of my home church in Syracuse, New York, which I have to confess, we were not that grand friends. But he always used to close his Sunday service with the benediction that he took from another pastor, William Sloan Coffin, saying, may God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, grace to know that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire. God initiates. We respond. What profit is there, says James, the brother of Jesus, if I see a brother or sister in need and say to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet do not supply their bodily needs? Love is a verb. It requires a response. Or to paraphrase Eugene Peterson, if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. It's a noisy, clanging, crashing world out there. Love never gives up. Like the concert pianist knowing our left hand from our right that corporately together in harmony with our Lord and Savior takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Because love never dies. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and join me in the affirmation of faith. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. 
Please stay standing now for our closing hymn, Though I May Speak, 335. Beloved in Christ, go in peace, knowing that God's love has no bounds or measurements. It is unending and never dies. And may we, as Christ's children, brothers and sisters, be a reflection of that love. So may Christ's peace go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into Christ's door. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come with me.